Hi, everyone. Welcome to a, another KE Report webinar. This webinar, we are featuring Tom Bill Mines, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol TBLL. I'm your host, Corey Fleck, and we will be taking questions throughout this webinar. So please feel free to use the question function within this software to send those questions directly to me. We've already had a number of questions come in, so I will be interjecting those throughout the presentation as it dictates and relates to the slides. I am joined by Adam Horn, the CEO and Chairman of Tom Bell Mines, also Tim Twomey, the Senior Hi. Advisor Geology. We are going to be working through a general corporate overview here of the company and really then focus on what's coming for the exploration and some of the key catalysts for the company. Adam, let's start off with you, please. Take it away, get us going into Tom Bell Mines, please. Okay, well, thank you so much, Corey, for that uh, kind introduction. Um, before I um, before I move forward, I just want to point out the company disclaimer, and hopefully, all, all all you kind people around this webinar have taken a look and looked at the Ford state statement and the Jason property disclosure. Um, uh, Tom builds a very very simple exploration story uh, in Canada. I think relative to many others out there. Um, we are royalty free. Um, uh, we have a royalty free property in uh, Northern Ontario, about 250 kilometers north of Thunder Bay, uh, where we own all the all the claims. We have three groups, but the main one we're gonna discuss is the Tomville main group. Um, that group is down plunge from our neighbor, the Hard Rock Project, which is 60% owned by Equinox. And that has uh, demonstrated a resource of about 11.5 million ounces, uh, of which 6.5 million is 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 underground. And that's measured and indicated and inferred. And then another uh, 5.5 mil, million is um, is uh, proven and probable uh, open pit uh, mine, which you can see here. Um, so we are hoping to do the same type of exploration program that uh, our neighbor has done and we and we have already achieved some pretty interesting and uh, very similar results to that. Um, with regards to our management team, I'd like to point out that we have three, uh, three people who have supreme local knowledge. Uh, one of them is joining me today is Tim Twomey. I, I refer to him as Mr. Geraldton because um, he, really, he really established the Hard Rock Project with zero resources from 2008 and uh, and it's you know matriculated from there. Then uh, another person who's in our group is uh, Ben Clayland, who worked for Tim uh, up to 2012, and then Tim retired and he took over Tim's position at the Hard Rock. And then I'd also like to mention uh, one of our advisory directors, who's also quite a large shareholder, is uh, Gordon Reed, who was the chief operating officer of Centura, and up to December they owned 50% of Tom Bill. And they bought, uh, I mean, not 50 percent of uh, Hard Rock uh, Premier Gold, and they bought that that 50 percent stake for about 200 million dollars in uh, 2016. Plus, they committed a lot of capital to do the additional work that's got uh, Hard Rock its permits and and ready to re uh, ready to uh, turn into a mine. We have quite a substantial cash position around six million as we speak. Um, okay. Let's keep moving on. Everybody, again, you can send in your questions when you want them asked, and please, I'll save them up too if needed. This is a very brief history of Tom Bill. Um, the bottom line is the Geraldton camp, of which Tom Bill is an integral part and probably the middle of, uh, was really established from a mining perspective from 1935 to 1970. Approximately 3 million ounces of gold were extracted during that period. Tom Bill itself was founded by Tom and Bill Johnson, two, two well-known prospectors. They had capital from, from Newmont at that time. And um, we had two uh, past producing mines that came under Tom and, and Bill's leadership, which is the Tom Bill mine itself and Tamora. Uh, real quick, just a quick question regarding some of the historic work. What can you tell us about some of the previous drilling? It seems like there hasn't been too much drilling done on this project, recently mm -hmm. at least. Well, no, I think it's more than recently. Um, we had, the family is, 
uh, before going public, who still is the, the major shareholder of the business, uh, did not do much uh, drilling work or exploration work. We, we, the property was purchased in 1981 by the family. And between now and essentially January 2021, very little was done. I mean, it was, uh, and the reason for that is we, we were waiting on what Hard Rock was doing. Also, the price of gold wasn't really in our favor. And probably moreover, we didn't have the suitable uh, colleagues to do a project like this, such as Tim and Ben and, and, and others we've built. So we, were, we didn't have the human resource angle uh, properly mapped out. We had our focus on other things. So we've done very little work. And I think Tim can, uh, can give you even some you know, more granular detail on that because he has done a lot of work looking over some of the you know, yep. minimal historical findings. Yeah, that's right. You want me to elaborate on that? Yeah, um, just very quickly, if you can, if you may. Yeah. Well, as a geologist, I have to admit I'm really surprised how little modern exploration has been done on the Tombill. And you look at the most recent geology map of Tombill. It was published in 1951, and uh, basically the old showings from the uh, prospectors in the 30s and the 40s. They did some stripping and some short, shallow diamond drill holes. All they were looking for is narrow, high-grade intercepts, never looking for anything wide or low-grade. And so they just stopped exploring. And so the first thing we did, obviously, uh, when uh, we started our exploration program was do some modern exploration. So we did some uh, airborne mag with a drone magnetic survey, very tight line spacing, a 50 meter line spacing, very high quality data. And from there, we're just building on and we have drill targets that we're drilling as we speak. Okay, so you guys have now isolated the drill targets. So let's move on. Let's talk about some of the past producers and the current resource here. Okay, I mean, this this um, map really illustrates where uh, uh, Tombell is uh, in the Geraldton camp. As you can see, we're sort of in the middle. We are surrounded, and that's why we call ourselves a donut hole, 360 degrees by Greenstone, which uh, is 60% owned by Equinox and uh, and wholly owns uh, the Hard Rock property, which I don't know if you can see my icon, is the green here. Um, that's actually our property where we sold them some surface rights to move highway. But So we're, we're 360 degrees uh, surrounded. You think we're landlocked, but lo and behold, the Trans-Canada Highway happens to go right through the middle of our property. So that gives us great access. Um, I've discussed uh, how the Hard Rock property, which uh, resource, which sort of starts here, goes for about five, I mean, 4.5 kilometers from here to our border where they have that, where I mentioned 11 and a half million ounces of, of gold that's being resourced. Moreover, uh, between the 30s and 60s, with they, mine, they mined out 2.1 million ounces of gold in that period. So it's very gold rich. There's our Talmora, which is one of our past producing gold mines. And this is uh, right right here. Sorry, the old, the, the, actually the namesake Talmora mines that we mined out. So what we were, what our intentions were at the beginning of this project, we obviously uh, used the word closology. I know it's used very much and perhaps uh, a malign term or overused term, but I think we've now, and we'll show this later, we've, um, we have done, some deep drilling and we've established that uh, the main zones, especially the F zone has, has uh, plunged across onto our, uh, onto our side. And, and we have, and we'll show pictures later where we have similar mineralization and you can see that. So in, uh, we're really focusing on the deep drilling, but plus we're doing a lot of surface work in the Northern part and we'll get into that. And Tim has already talked about that earlier. Um, once again, the donut hole, um, the past mines, the production. Um, it's probably worth mentioning the infrastructure and jurisdiction. That's probably second to none. And, and it's obviously with, um, with uh, this property, the Hard Rock property, uh, going to motion. They have built a camp for 500 people. They've said their intention really is to, to press the button to, to, to become a a mine second half this year doing the construction. They've got all the permits, it's shovel ready. The infrastructure, 
uh, will be that much greater than it is right now, which includes the highway. There's an airport up here, um, 250 kilometers from Thunder Bay, and uh, uh, and a population that's very supportive of of uh, mining jobs and, and and developing their economy. Adam, let's get into the one question that I know a lot of investors are asking. I got this question even before the webinar started, and that is, what kind of conversations have you had with the owners of the Hard Rock Deposit? And, well, quite frankly, you're surrounded by some well-known companies. So what, any insights on your relationship to them or their interest even in the Tom Bell project? Well, I mean, you can start here by looking at the stripes here. Those are actually uh, uh, surface rights that we've sold to our neighbors to enable them to build the mine that those uh, those surface rights will will help them move the, the trans canada highway uh so they have access to their open pit and these uh this stripey area um in, is is where they're going to i mean their mill is going to be right here which by the way will be will is a massive mill i think they're doing about twenty eight thousand tons per day to feed that mill so they're going to need a lot of iron ore to, to get through there so we, we sold them some surface rights Obviously, we've, we've spoken to them, but they did change ownership, remember, in December, um, where they, where they sold, uh, sold this asset and, and the surrounding for, for about 700 million US. Um, but the, I mean, it's obvious as it plunges down, um, I'm sure there will be some discussions since we're right smack in the middle, but, um, We've never entered in any transactions or things like that, but we've been good neighbors, and uh, you know we wish them all the luck to build a build a great uh, production center there. Okay, sounds like you guys have already, yeah, kind of worked together to already help them out. So yeah, we've let's move on. Then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I uh, I'm gonna get Tim to uh, jump in here because. He, he sort of did the slide that sort of changed a bit, but this is the, the resource slide that, uh, that shows uh, the plunge from um, hard, uh, the Hard Rock Project over to Tomville. Yep, that's right. So that's a long section looking north, and you can see on the right-hand side, the uh, Tomville, uh, I mean, the left-hand side is Tomville, and on the right-hand side is the uh, Hard Rock Project. So the F zone. Uh, I was VP of Exploration for Premier back in 08 to 2012, and uh, I actually put that press release out. The uh, furthest west hit that Premier did on the F zone was that MM170 there, and that graded 18 grams over 20 meters, 18 grams of gold. And uh, that's about 150 meters from the boundary with Tomville. And you can see the geology there. Uh, the shallow plunging of the F zone, and it's basically straight as an arrow for about three and a half kilometers. So obviously our first target is to follow that up. And we in fact did hit that in a uh, whole uh, 05A, which uh, we've press released recently. And, and we graded six meters. grams over 13 meters. So, and I can tell you the geology of that hit is exactly the same as the geology and just as robust as everything that I saw on the hard rock side for the F zone. And so we're continuing to drill at as we speak. So we have two drills on there right now. We call those drills our truth machines. <laughs> what, what about drilling or the follow-up work that Equinox could be doing here on their high-grade hit then? Any insights? Well, I don't think there's much room to expand it. They already have that as a resource. And in fact, their underground resource that they've released publicly is over uh, 6 million ounces of gold. And so that's something that uh, they've already done work on. And it really reduces the risk for us because we know how robust that is. And the geological model continues on for kilometers. So um, this is giving us a very good target to follow up. And we thank them for it. Um, one thing I want to emphasize, Tim, is um, uh, Ben mentioned this, that there was a vast amount of drilling that went on on, on the Hard Rock property, like every 20 That's years. Right. Put, so when Tim says this is the zone, it really is because they just kept on drilling and drilling and it just kept on confirming, confirming. Um, which I think basically 
you know, the zone, the F zone, which is the largest of the zones, and it represents yep. the highest grade on this property and, and the most volume. But I think that's about 25 to 35 uh, meters in width. And uh, the height is established about 100 to 150 meters. And it's very consistent. Um, yep. So that's if you're right. looking at that, and I, and I think um, density ratio is about 2.7. So, you know, with a six gram the six gram and the six gram uh, per ton average, which uh, uh, is 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 in the is in the technical reports of uh, of the Hard Rock property, it just keeps being consistent. I mean, we see some wonderful holes here and here, but when you blend it all out, it's still quite a very strong um, and consistent plunge. Yeah. So, what type right. of step outs are you guys planning on doing here to follow up on your hit there? That six grams per ton over thirteen meters. We're going to be stepping out uh, between 100 and 150 meters per parent hole uh, to the west. And then we uh, drill two daughter holes off of each parent hole. So this is the exact same recipe that we used at the Hard Rock side. And that's enough to get it into an inferred resource once we have enough drilling data. Okay. So you can move fairly quickly to an inferred resource. Okay. Uh, let's keep moving through this then here, guys. Uh, I think this is this really this is really a a slide that Tim will do a better job than I will. Yep, and it just shows the complications right at the boundary. Interestingly enough, there's two post ore diabase dikes that offset the mineralization. So that's taken us probably four drill holes to actually figure out those offsets and continue on. And now the five uh, A hit that we just released shows it back to that normal plunge line, which will continue uh, supposedly as we drill that off to the west. So this is a plan view there. Okay, so that explains a little bit on those first four holes then, hey? Because the first yeah. four holes, they kind of missed the zone, didn't they? Yes, so it took us a while to figure out this complicated geological puzzle. And now we have it, and now we're clicking. Now it sounds like you're going after it. Okay, thank you. Well, I think Tim Tim's responsible for both sets of rock here, so he might as well. Yeah, yeah, I've taken both these pictures. Uh, one was in 2011, and the one on the left was this year, hole 05A. And you just see the F-zone type mineralization. And uh, that's what I meant by it. it's the same geological setting, same exact um, deformation and alteration and mineralization that we see on the F zone on both sides of the boundary. So that gives us a lot of encouragement. This zone continues on and we're gonna keep drill testing it as we go further west. Okay, so consistency, that makes sense. Yes. Um, Who wants to take again, this one, here's guys? Here's a longitudinal you section. This one's a bit simpler and it shows most of the uh, hard rock project and you can see there, uh, the, the schematic of their open pit, that's where 5 million ounces of proven ore reserves are. And then the underground resources, another 6.5 million ounces. Now, I got to remind you folks that this is in the middle of a historic past producing mines. And to me as a geologist, this is remarkable that the potential exists still in a historic mine setting to actually find new gold resources. So we're marching across the same way that uh, Hard Rock side and drilling off that F zone with deep drill holes there. You can see the red dots every 100 meters with a parent hole and a daughter, two daughter holes on each one. And we're just going to march across for about 2.6 kilometers is the length of the target that we have on the Tomville side. Okay, so you're just going to itself. systematically expand that then yes. right? by drilling yes. essentially fences. Yep, it, that's right. We're okay. just doing what they did. I mean, just to uh, you know, from a from a um, distance perspective, the uh, um, underground where the six and a half million ounces is uh, six million ounces, it sort of represents two point three kilometers. Then you have the open yep. pit, which is about two kilometers. So from that point to our border is about four point three kilometers. I'd say most of the purple is probably the F zone. And the reason I'm saying that is as a consequence of the F zone, 
you know, you can, you probably, if that zone didn't exist and you found this resource with the other zones, you probably could mine it because there's, you know, limited grade. But the F zone gives you the ability to get at these other zones because you've already, uh, exp you know, expended the, the fixed cost. So it gives you gives you economic leverage to go at these other things. And that's, uh, I think that's a pretty key. Uh, yeah, that's key, a good point, you know. Adam. And I just want to reiterate that, that uh, we've been finding these sub-parallel mm -hmm. zones as well. Many others like it uh, beside the F zone. The thing is, we haven't actually hit those other sub zones in their most dilatant corridor because we're finding them on the way down to the F zone. So this, again, is something that we're going to be looking at later, looking at these subsidiary zones and see if we can expand them and find where the uh, wider sections of those are as well. I mean, just a quick, quick, quick question here, guys. What's the grade of the open pit compared to the underground? Grade of the open pit is about a gram and a half. And that's typical. And the underground grade, the F zone grade would be about six grams. But you include all the other zones. And with a lower cutoff grade, you're going to get about four grams. And uh, depending on which cutoff grade that's used. And you can see those in the 43101 reports that have been published for the hard rock. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, I'm, once again, I'll get over. To, I'll hand this over to Tim. But now we're getting into how we're going to do this category. So yeah. Um, so we have a two-pronged approach yeah. here. Right now, we have two drills on uh, drilling the deep target, and that's the F zone. So we're talking about uh, a kilometer below surface and following at that very shallow plunge line, about ten degrees to the west. And you can see there's our recipe for a uh, inferred resource. So we're going to follow it along and leapfrog our drills every 100 meters and just continue westward for about 2.6 kilometers. So that's the number one prong. The second prong, though, of exploration is a near surface exploration uh, program. And uh, yeah, let's go to that slide. So that's our modern magnetic survey, the first modern exploration on the property since um, Adam's family's owned it. And um, to me, that's it's remarkable as a geologist to have this kind of potential at this day, this stage, truly is a unique opportunity. So from this, we are actually selecting other near surface low grade targets for stripping. And there's also historical showings that were found in the 30s, never followed up for low grade gold. And it just amazes me because, you know, we went into the Hard Rock project back in 08 and started finding wide low-grade gold right in the middle of historic underground mines. So as a geologist, I feel there's potential for that same thing on the, on the Tombill side. And so what we're doing is stripping off these targets. We'll be doing channel sampling and then re-ranking them with a simple Bayesian ranking system for drilling. So we'll do some short drill holes as well on our surface targets this summer. Now, what's the status of the current drill program? How many holes have you guys done? And just remind everybody the overall program then. The overall program has started with the deep drilling. So we're on our sixth hole right now. And um, that's continuing. We are also stripping our surface targets as we speak. And that's going on. And we'll be uh, bringing in a drill to drill the uh, near surface targets probably all, uh, early next month. So this is kind of a tough question here, guys. But to build up, let's say, a 2 million ounce resource, how much drilling is needed? How much money would that cost? Any insights here? Well, we have enough money for phase one drilling. And that includes the deep target and the near surface targets. And then we have uh, a budget for further drilling, depending on results, of course. Okay. Uh, and uh, again, you had already mentioned that you could move this into an inferred resource in the near term after the phase one program. Is that going to be possible? Is that a time frame that's doable? Well, that's a good question. I'm uncertain about that. I would say phase two would be more certainty um, just to spend the money on doing a resource. Uh, that I would suggest um, um, just thinking out loud, probably towards the year end. Okay, perfect, yeah. thank you. And then, I mean, we're not gonna give up, but you know, you can, 
as I, I did mention sort of the widths and the heights of, uh, of the neighbors and how far we're in. So some people can do sort of back envelope calculations and things on what we've you know, done to date and so forth. So, Okay. Sounds good, guys. We can awesome. move along. Yeah. Right. I, think, I think we can go. Um, uh, I think we, go, we can move over to the team side now. Um, so we have a strong management team. Um, John Alexander's got a very good background, CFO, and has worked with public companies. Tim and Ben uh, mentioned Elizabeth is in-house exploration manager, and she's assembling some further team as we transition from a consultancy to an in-house. And then uh, Retta Jalabis uh, does our corporate development IR, and he's an ex-JP Morgan banker. Um, I'd like to mention our advisory board because they're all quite committed. They're owners of equity, and they put you know put their money where their mouth is, so to speak. Uh, Quentin had joined uh, with via Crescat um, after we went public. I don't think it was aware when we went public, and uh, they own you know six percent of the company. And he's very helpful and uh, very constructive and gets his hands very dirty on this. Uh, Gordon Reed, I mentioned him earlier. Uh, he, he has an outstanding operating background. He, won, he ran one of probably the toughest mines in the world in Kazakhstan. He, he knows what he's doing. And then Larry, he was the COO of Centera. So he really knows the, the Hard Rock property and, and laterally Tomville. And he's very helpful indeed. And then Ian Stalker from K92 is a a large shareholder. So I think we have a good team to execute and give us direction and, and uh, give us advice. And we use most of it. That's for sure. Okay. Um, you don't need to go through that. I mean, that's the team. People can do that separately. I think people like to know something about the capital structure. They're about a hundred, you know, I'll round this off. They're about 150 million shares outstanding. There's close to 50 million in warrants and options. The average uh, strike price on those about 22 cents. So it would be fully diluted around 200 million with extra change. Cash at March 31 was 7 million, but we're, we're closer to 6 million, as I mentioned. With regards to who owns uh, the business, who are the stakeholders, I mentioned our family, about 51%. Then we have other insiders who are in the same lockup category as us, which is a, a sort of gradual three year. That's another 10%. Then the, on the institutional side, including uh, Crescat, you have about 27, 28%. And then uh, retail and high net worth is, is, is near 12%. Um, these are some of the names on the right who participated when we went public. Basically, some decent large investors, both from Canada and Australia. Now, when did a lot of these guys come into the stock? And what insights can you give us in terms of maintaining those positions as the company moves through this drilling and potentially raising more money? Well, I can tell you they all came in in December, um, the institutionals and, and Cresca. Um, we hope as we, you know, as we go down the line and have more uh, results like, uh, uh, you know, the TB00, TB21005, so we go down the strike. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have more people more interested as we prove that out. I think we've got a lot of interest since we went public at 15 cents. Um, yet, you know, we'd like to get a bigger fan club. And uh, and as as we, you know, as we started, we were a closeology play, and um, you know, we were hoping to replicate what our our neighbor did. And we have now established that we're a continuity play. And now the question is. How long is that continuity? How long is that strike? And then, and then we overlap overlap that with uh, the near surface, which we didn't really have any expectations of in the early stages of going public. But now we feel there's a lot more potential there, uh, and we've had some decent results over, you know, high grade over small small amounts. So we hopefully, you know, we can prove that out. So. We hope to get more shareholders and and, and other capital, uh, institutional capital coming in. Perfect. Uh, one quick question regarding the family holdings there. Any escrow uh, agreements or arrangements? Yeah, we're all in escrow. Yeah, I'm sorry. Perhaps I didn't clarify it so well when I answered. We're all under a three-year escrow agreement, the other insiders in the family. Okay. 
61. So it's, it's, it's tightly. I mean, we've owned it for 40 years. We're not, you know, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. You know, we want to make sure this is a success and looking at the long term. Okay, fair enough. Uh, any interest in the U.S. listing too? That question came in a bit earlier. Yes, that will be happening. We're, we, we've already applied for it and we're hoping between the 20th and 30th of July that we uh, accomplish that OTC. Okay, thank you. I mean, we've got most of the application in. Okay. Uh, that takes care of all the capital structure questions. Moving on. I think that's sort of, I mean, I'll leave up the summary page, but I think it's really now questions. And I, okay. mean, I think, and, you know, it's we're being short. I don't think I really need to reemphasize. I mean, these are the clear, the clear okay. selling points of Tomville. And the focus really is around this exploration program. So a couple more questions that came in. How many holes do you think you would have to do in phase two in order to satisfy the idea of the deposit? And, or, well, I guess that means move into the deposit. And uh, how deep on average are you going to be drilling some of those deeper holes? Oh, that's a good question. So we've planned 23 drill pads. And that will take care of that uh, two and a half kilometer strike length. And that's for the deep drilling. And we have um, eight holes for the surface program in phase one. And uh, the deep drill drilling program, we're looking at a kilometer below surface on average. And for the shallow program, less than 300 meters. Okay. Uh, what are you guys' uh, or average drill costs per meter, let's say? It's about $200 a meter. Okay. That's pretty good then. Um, and then in terms well, of, I wish it was cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But overall $200 a meter, that's all right. Um, that's in terms of turnaround time from I mean, the, from, it's be cheaper. <laughs> uh, and now guys in time, in terms of turnaround time from the labs, what are you expecting here? One we're to pretty, two weeks. Yeah. We're very fortunate. We believe it or not, Geraldton has its own lab owned by Acta yep. labs. And so, uh, it's, I don't think many, uh, that, that's how blessed we are with infrastructure. Yeah, okay, fair. Uh, guys, can you just summarize, I guess, the overall uh, drill program in terms of what investors should be looking for when the news starts to come out? What will you consider a success? What did, what's crucial here to understand about this project and this asset moving forward? Good questions. You want me to start, Adam? Yes, please. Well, um, Deep program, we're going to continue to build on the F zone itself because that's the primary target at depth. And uh, again, that six gram average uh, is a good average grade, six grams per ton gold. And so we're going to continue to march westward on that at 100 meter centers. And also this summer, the short drill holes that we're going to be drilling on the surface program. We're going to be looking for a gram and a half again over much wider widths, of course. And we're not going to be putting out press releases on every hole. We're going to be waiting. We'll do this in batches of, I don't know, half a dozen or so. And just do an orderly um, uh, information to the market. Okay. Uh, in terms of permitting, any more permits that you guys need to uh, progress with these nope. drill plans? That's a good no question. No permits needed. Yeah, yeah, we're extremely unique. Um, we, I don't know if I emphasize, we own the land. I mean... Uh, it, 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 it's uh, we own the these aren't crown leases or anything, so we don't need any expiration permits. Perfect. So you can do what you want. Um, okay, yeah. guys, that wraps up the questions. I think everybody is just more or less waiting in anticipation to see what some of these drill results yield, especially for yes. that F zone extension. Um, guys, yes, I please. appreciate your time. Everybody, if you have any follow up questions after listening and watching this or just watching the recording, you can always email me fleck at kereport.com i will get adam and tom back or adam and tim back on the show uh to Good. address any of those questions and also follow up on some of the drill results so guys thank you uh for your time everyone thank you for tuning in appreciate it right on. bye for now